Herzlich willkommen zum 37. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfestival hier in München in seiner zum ersten Mal auch dualen Ausgabe, also im Kino und auch online. Wir hören jetzt das Gespräch mit dem Regisseur und dem Kameramann von Lejos de Casa. Lejos de Casa hat seine Weltpremiere hier bei uns auf dem Festival in unserer Reihe Doc Horizonte. Und ich bin sehr froh, dass wir jetzt Carlos... Ähm, Hernández Vázquez zugeschaltet haben aus Mexiko und Luis, der Kameramann von Lejos de Casa. Hola, ¿qué tal estáis? How are you? Hi, I'm great. I'm very excited, very happy to be here uh, at the world premiere of, the, of our documentary, thanks to the festival. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, thanks for all. Well, it's yeah, a pleasure. Here. It's a pleasure. Here. And Carlos, um, the, the first thing I wanted to ask you, I read that you're a lawyer in your, in your first life. <laughs> Before being a filmmaker, you're a lawyer. And uh, what made you, made you turn towards filmmaking? So can you achieve more telling stories through film than fighting in court? Um, um, I don't, it, it was more circumstantial. I believe that um, It was because uh, the place where I was born is a very small city. I really didn't know that we could live from making movies and, and all that work for me was very, very far uh, from my reality. When I uh, came to Mexico City to study uh, law, I found out that uh, this work could be possible. And little by little, I, I start to to approach to the cinema in a professional way. And I really found a world completely full of stories that I really wanted to, to be close to. And in particular, with, the, with all the documentary work, I found myself uh, with the opportunity to talk about uh, human rights issues uh, closer to the people than, than as a lawyer. I believe that um, I don't know, I, I, I was talking with a friend that works in the Supreme Court here in Mexico, and they sent them with all the, this immigration crisis in, in Tijuana five days to look and research. And we went like uh, one a mo two months, more, more or less. Um, and I, I realized that we could have this approach very close to the people and that's what I like to, to approach to the stories and to the people and don't just go five days and make notes. I really believe that in the, in, in the documentary cases we can uh, uh, be closer to stories and to the, and to the human crisis that, that all the people are living. How did you get in contact with these three institutions you were filming? No, they, they are from the church. And how did you get their trust and the, the contact to the kids? And, and the other question would be, how old is the youngest? From what age range do they have there? The youngest is like uh, five or four or? You, you can find um, children for all, from all ages. Uh, you can find babies there, uh, uh, children from three, four years. The youngest that appears in our documentary has six years. If I don't, I don't have a mistake. So I, I don't know if Luis remembers that. You, um, excuse me. You researched for six years? No, no, no. Um, Uh, the, the, the the younger children the yeah. younger children are, yeah. are in the documentary yeah. have, have six years okay um, um, and the other question with the with the institutions um, it's a very particular case the institutions in in Tijuana and all the frontier cities in Mexico because they don't have the support of the government so all of them are uh, private institutions almost all of them are religious institutions. Um, but um, for us, the particular case was to research the institutions that was like um, um, working with families and with uh, children. So we approached to them, we explained, uh, we have a lot of interviews with, 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 
with the within with the leaders of the institutions uh, to talk about the documentary, the approach of the children. We we wanted to have like this uh, very respicuous way to approach to the children, and they were very worried about that also. Um, uh, so then, when we had the permission to approach to the children and to the families, um, we start to to pass time with the children. We play cards with them, we play basketball, soccer, um, we, we gain their, their trust uh, with time, with time, uh, playing with them. And that, that's the truth. We didn't have any cameras ni, or nothing of the equipment and we just play with them and, and talk with them. So, so they can trust us. Yeah. So you develop a special relationship over these months, and um, how does it feel, uh, how is it now? Have the children seen the film? And do you know, do, do you, what I want to ask is, do you still maintain this rela relationship? Do you know what became of them, or is it like we are very close for some months and then everybody goes their way anyway? How does that feel, yeah. or how is the, the responsibility as well? Yeah, the relationship was very, very close. It was, um, I, I don't know, we, you, you start to love these children because they, they, they are very conscious what they are living and, and they know that they are in a fragile situation, but also they are very uh, trusty that they are going to be well with their families or they are going to, to meet again in the, in the U.S. Um, so we made like a very profound relationship with, with them. Uh, it was very sad to leave the, the institutions when we finished the documentary. Also because they lived, uh, they wait almost three months to, to have an answer for the American authorities uh, for the asylum process. So also in this way, in, in this side, we, we, we have to say goodbye to some children that have that the authorization to, to Pass to the U.S. So it was a very, a very, a very couple of weeks that we met, but it was a very profound relationship. Um, we lost already contact with some of them because uh, some of them uh, crossed the border um, illegally. Uh, cool. Some of them we we have uh, the connection with them. We know that. Uh, the Lazaro, the, the, the children that climbs the wall, um, is, is close to New York, is living with okay. her mother, with, with uh, her brother also. Um, he ha he's um, in this uh, process to get the asylum in the US. He has like this, um, um, I don't know how this... Um, the, the bracelet, no? The bracelet that is monitoring all 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 their actions. So uh, also for us, it's like uh, I don't know. It's like very very shocking to have to to see him and with his bright bracelet all the time. But also he is like uh, happy to to achieve this this goal. So yeah. Uh, would you? I mean, just it, it's just coming up. Would you make a sequel, a second part of now these children are the, in the U.S. What happened to them? Is this a plan or something to kind of follow I, them for the next five years or something? I, I don't know. I, I really, I really would like to follow Lazaro. It was the children that uh, that we were closer to. He was like um, very involved in the in the documentary from the beginning, and we. I I, I really want to go there and and see what is, what is going on with her life, and and maybe we could continue the documentary there. But I believe that it will be more more close to to his case um, for this reason. Also because we. Is the is the guy with with more communication today that we have? So yeah. A question to Luis. Luis, how was it to film in with all these children and being three grown-ups, one sound, a director, and you? How did you move among them? 
Well, uh, as Carlos said, uh, first we developed a, a, a relationship with them for them to trust us. Like we were playing with them, we were uh, having conversations with them. And then we approached with a camera, but it was basically the same. Um, I think the main difference of shooting with children rather than adults is that if they like the camera, they'll be very eager to uh, to shoot with you, to help you. Yeah, so to maintain you as a public, the, <laughs> to, to yeah. have you as their public, because then they have somebody watching them. Exactly. Uh, so so it was really fun shooting with them. Um, also, uh, they are in this in, in these shelters where they sometimes get bored because they don't have anything else to do. So. When they saw us, three adults with a camera that wanted to be with them, uh, they were, were very happy and they were uh, participating and, and, and helping in many ways. So it was really, it was really fun. It was, on the other side, it was really tough because of their uh, situation and their stories. No? Yeah, it must be hard to leave afterwards. Yeah, definitely, yes. I mean, as Carlos said, we, we developed a really close relationship with them and uh, yeah, it was, it was tough. So, Carlos, um, you developed this and you went to uh, Vision de Riel to get uh, funding or to get uh, participation. How was your work, how, how did you develop this project? Was it easy or was it very hard? Um, it was uh, It was very particular because um, we were, um, Luis and I, we were um, in all this migration process that are occurring in the, in the Mexican frontier with the U.S. Uh, with different kinds of projects uh, for the last, I don't know, Luis, maybe a couple, four years, five years. Uh, we are like uh, portraying stories of immigration there. Um, so in one of those uh, trips, um, we found out that all these um, um, migration of families and children explode with all the all the new regulations of the Trump administration, with all the new politics of the asylum process, uh, with the politi the new politic uh, of asylum called stay in Mexico that applies to all the families to stay there in Mexico in the in the frontier for two, three, four months, uh, waiting for an answer for the asylum. Uh, uh, solicitude. So um, it was a, a, a thing in the moment. We we went like a couple of we will stay there and we said we, we need to shoot this. Um, in that moment, we had like a first um, 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 support of of the Mexican Film Institute to to shoot uh, doc, uh, documentaries about the immigration process. So with that, we we start and then. Um, as we shoot and as we continue with the editing process, with the montage process, we ask for uh, another help in Visions, in Docs Montevideo, in Guadalajara Film Festival. So we just um, um, make this film as we was uh, like... Uh, no, because the time I think it must that. have been difficult because you never know if you, I mean, if you pitch a project uh, and then it's half a year before you will shoot, in this case, in the shelter, you never know if the children you met will still be there or not. So it's a, there is a big fluctuation, there is, it's very fragile, everything. You don't know whom you're going to have then when you, when you have production um, ready to uh, start. Yeah, in fact, uh, the, the first time we went and we, we realized that, that, that this uh, phenomenon was occurring, um, we passed uh, with, the, with the institution and with the children in that moment, like two weeks, we came back to Mexico City to, to plan all the shooting. Uh, and, we went, and, we, and when we came back to Tijuana, all those children that we already met they were gone. They were gone. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for us, it was very important to stay there a couple of months and shoot with the children that we are uh, meeting in that moment, yeah. because we we knew that, that that could change very quickly. Yeah. yeah. 
Have the children, I mean, ha have you shown the film in the institutions, in the asylums? Or has it Not been yet. seen in Mexico? No. So no. this is really the first time somebody sees the film. It's the first time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> what, is, what will be your next step? Uh, well, uh, our next step, we wanted to, to that the uh, film has more projections in Europe. Uh, we are going to show the documentary for the first time in the Guadalajara Film Festival here in Mexico. Then we are going to go to Tijuana uh, to show the documentary in the institution where, where it was the shooting. And, and I really want to, um, to make that this documentary could be seen in institutions, embassies uh, from both sides of the frontier. I really would like that this documentary have more projection in North America because uh, it's a problem that we have already here that the new administration hasn't changed at all. So it's very important for, for us that this uh, documentary could be seen in, 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 in this part of the world. Yeah. Only also from a, from a legal perspective, no? So that we would close the circle that you started as a lawyer and now you make a film that might um, have some influence in the in the in the law, right? Because it's yeah. it's a legal thing, obviously, which which brings so much suffering to the people. So, well, Carlos and Luis, thank you very much for this talk and for your film. And uh, we hope to see you soon again with your next project, maybe following one of the kids, maybe something else. Um, also, this film is nominated for the Kino Kino Prize, so please vote for it. Um, the prize is sponsored by the Bavarian Public Television and uh, Dreisat. And uh, so if you like this film, please vote for it. And I say bye-bye and come back to the festival. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye, thanks.